Okay, in this problem, we're actually going to be proving that that limit is true. We're going to prove that your limit as x goes to 3 if 5x minus 4 equals 11. Now, unfortunately, it's not enough just to plug 3 into here and then get 11 and that's the answer. That's calculating your answer, that's not actually showing it. Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to use a, a definition uh, to show that, and that's using the epsilon def uh, delta definition. You want to make sure you watch that first video in this section because that describes all the variables that are involved, what epsilon and what delta actually is, and it talks about a line that we're going to use in this proof. So if you haven't watched that yet, please watch that first before uh, watching this video because it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, so assuming that you've already watched that already, let's proceed. We need to first indicate what all our variables are that we're given in this original problem. What we're given here is your x of 0 is going to be equal to 3. Your f of x is this part after the limit, that's 5x minus 4, and your l is equal to 11, that's your limit. So that's the three pieces of preliminary information that's been provided uh, for this particular problem. Now, in order to do the proof that we're going to do all over here, we need to first use that, that first line that I mentioned underneath the graph in that first video we did in this section. That one said this, for each epsilon greater than zero, so you're saying that if there's an error in the y direction, there exists delta greater than zero. So this is saying that if there's, a, if there's an error in the y direction, there's an error in the x direction as well. So if the, for each this, there exists a, uh, a delta greater than zero, and you're going to put such that. All right, now this is where you're going to include the absolute value statement that I talked about in the first video. We had this right here, the absolute value of x minus x of o we have there. That was what was originally given in the first video. In our problem, our x of o is given as 3. So we're going to put absolute value x minus 3, this is less than uh, delta. So we're starting with, with this one, such that if we have this statement that's true, okay, then the other statement was absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. f of x is 5x minus 4, uh, and inside here you're also going to put minus 11, that's less than epsilon. So this is saying the difference in the x direction is going to be between 0 and delta. Difference in the y direction is the difference between our function uh, and the limit, and you have this. So this is always the first statement that you're going to start with for all these kind of problems, except, of course, that this one and this one are going to change based on information you have here. But this should always be the first line that should appear in your uh, statement there. Once we have this complete, then we have to work out both sides of this proof. So we're basically going to work out both sides. First, what we're going to do is we're going to show that this guy right here is equal to this one. Then we're going to show this one can be shown to be equal to that one by making a, a substitution. So first, let's start with the first side of the proof. So I'm going to go ahead and separate this. We're going to show two different sides of a proof. First, we'll start with this one is going to have to equal this one. Now with this, what I can do is I can simplify that and make it 5x minus 15 is less than epsilon. So I'm starting with this statement, simplifying it to here. What I can do is I can factor that one, take a 5 out, I get x minus 3 less than epsilon. Whenever you have the absolute value, of two number two things multiplied together, you can apply the absolute value to each of those separately and then multiply them together. In this case, I have an absolute value of five. Absolute value of five is five. So because of that, I'm allowed to actually apply the absolute value and remove it. And I get this. Okay. The last step I want to do is I want to make I want to get the absolute value x minus three by itself because I notice that I have it up there in this one. Divide both sides by three, I get x minus three is less than epsilon over 5. So what this is saying is that I can make this one match this one as long as I make a substitution. I'm going to say let delta equal epsilon over 5. 
if I make this particular substitution, that's how I can make both of these be equal to each other. So I'm going to let, again, delta equal epsilon over 5. Now, of course, absolute value automatically has got to be greater than 0 anyway. So this would match that one naturally, even though I have the 0 here on that one. It's, it's always implied because uh, your absolute value automatically is going to be uh, greater than 0. So now that I've shown this part is true, I need to show the other way. I need to start now with this statement, and I need to work through to get this one. So you might be thinking, well, why do I have to do that? Isn't that going around in a big circle? Yeah, it is going around in a circle, but that's the way proofs work. You have to show one side is true, but then you have to show the other side is true for you to get back to where it started from, and that's a complete uh, proof. So that's something that you'll be doing higher level classes again. You're showing one side is true and showing the other. That's what we're basically doing here. So you're saying that if I let your delta equal epsilon over 5, then I can work with this one and show that it's going to be equal to that one over there. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to do that part right here. We're going to let ep, uh, delta equal epsilon over 5. So I'm going to start with this statement. 0 less than x minus 3 less than, instead of putting the delta, I'm going to put in epsilon over 5. So now I'm starting with this one here, and I'm going to work it all down until I end up getting this as a result. What I can do is I can multiply both sides by 5. So 5 times 0 is 0. I get a 5 times absolute value x minus 3 is less than epsilon. Then what I can do is the 5, I can put that back inside the absolute value. Again, I can apply absolute value to each of these, and the 5 is allowed to go back inside. So now I'm going to have 5 times x minus 3, that goes back inside the absolute value. I'm going to multiply this part out. I'm going to get 5x minus 15 is less than epsilon. And then what I want to do is the very last step, I'm going to actually rewrite it just like this one here because I want to show that I have f of x minus l left over and that completes the proof. So what I'll do here is I'll do 5x minus 4 minus 11. I'm going to break it up that way. So that way, specifically, I have this. I have 0 less than f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So now I've shown that if I work with the original one, which is the x minus x of o, then it results in this here, f of x minus l, and that basically completes the definition. So the work that you're going to show for this problem is not a numerical answer. You're actually going to have to show this whole thing that I have here. This, this whole thing is going to be the answer on this problem. So again, proofs. You have to show work step by step. And again, it looks like it's redundant. You're doing the same thing all over again. But that's the way these kind of proofs work. You're showing one side is true. We're showing that basically that this one implies this one. And then uh, we're basically, uh, or actually this one implies that one. You started with the epsilon one. And then you're going to show that this one here implies the other one. So you actually got to show both directions. One implies each other, you're doing it in both directions, and then you have that as your complete proof.